Hi, I'm Chris Ketke, and today we are going to make a bacon weave pork loin. Talk about something that looks amazing coming off the grill, and people will look at it and say, how did you do that? It's really not as hard as it looks. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to brine the pork loin. And to prepare the brine, I have water. I'm going to put in some sugar. I'm going to put in a bunch of salt and some flavorings. I have some dried thyme leaf, some cloves of garlic that are just sort of lightly smashed up. Put those into the water along with some black pepper. This then, I'm going to put it onto the side burner. And this is really where the Sabre side burner comes in handy because I'm going to turn on both rings here to bring this up to a boil quickly. Talk about a lot of heat in, in, with this side burner, that's going to boil fast. Once it boils, take it off the heat, cool it. Once it's cool, put it in the refrigerator until it's ice cold. Once that brine is very cold, I'm going to go ahead and take the pork loin here. And I've trimmed the pork loin, trimmed it with all the, the excess fat, it's all gone. What I'm going to do then is place this into the brine. And this then goes back into the refrigerator. It's going to take about eight to ten hours of brining time before we're able to wrap it up in bacon. Once the pork is brined, now it's time to make our bacon weave. I'm going to start off with a pound of bacon. And what, what we're going to do is just take some of these strips and lay them out sort of lengthwise here, almost touching each other. And notice also what I'm doing is as I put them down, I give them just a little tug to stretch them out. And if you have bacon that's fat on one side and thin on the other side, you want to be sure to sort of alternate the bacon back and forth. Because the idea is, when we're done, we want to have a square of bacon. Sounds like fun, a square of bacon. There we go. All right, one more. That's step one. Now, to make the weave, this is what we're going to do. We're going to find the middle point of the bacon, take one piece, pull it back halfway, alternate to the next one, pull it back halfway, then the next one goes back halfway, and this one goes back halfway. Then I take a new piece of bacon, give it a, whoops, give it a little tug, put it down, put the bacon back over the top of this first piece, and then I go to the other ones that weren't pulled back the first time, and I pull those back, put in a new piece of bacon, and basically you just keep doing the same thing over and over again until you have a square of woven bacon. Again, it looks a lot trickier than it is. Now when you sort of filled up one side, maybe I can get one more in there. Let's see if I can do that. Maybe get one more piece of bacon in there at the end. Great. There we go. Now when that's done, we go to the other side and basically pick up in the same way. So I'm going to pull those back, put a piece of bacon in, put the pieces of bacon back, go to the alternate pieces, pull those back, put a piece of bacon in. It really is a beautiful thing when it's all done. And again, it's not something that you see all that often. But it tastes great. Okay, there is our bacon weave. And notice also, I've woven it on a piece of parchment paper. That's very important because this is critical to helping wrap this around the pork loin in just a second. Now, onto our pork loin. Here's that pork loin that's been sitting in that brine. And you can feel that the texture of the pork loin is a little bit different. It's a little firmer than after it's been sitting in that brine. So I'm just going to take it, put it in a piece of paper towel just to sort of dampen off the excess brine. Unwrap it. Great. And then place that pork loin right in the center of the bacon. 
Now this is when it gets kind of fun. I'm going to take one side of that parchment paper and wrap it up. I did it fairly quickly, sort of a whoop, one shot so the bacon doesn't fall off. And then I'm going to unwrap the parchment. I'm going to take the other side and do the same thing with it. Press it down, sort of stick it to the outside of that pork loin, and then unwrap it. There's our bacon weave pork loin. Now, when we cook it, I just want to be sure that there's no way that bacon could fall off. And so what I'm going to do is take some butcher's twine, and I'm just going to tie a few ties across the roast. Again, just to be sure that that is really well secured to the pork roast on the outside. Or on the inside, I should say. One other very important fact here is that when you're doing this, be absolutely sure you are using butcher's twine. Because not all twine type materials are suited for cooking over high heat. So insist on butcher's twine. All right, let's go ahead and put one more after this. And then we'll be ready to put this on our spit to put on the rotisserie. There we go. It really is beautiful. All right. Now it's time to put it on the spit. So I'm going to take the cage, put it onto the spit here. Put that down nice and tight. And then, kind of the important part of this is to be sure that this really goes down the center of the pork loin. So I'm going to really pay attention when it comes out the other side here to be sure it is centered. That looks great. And then I'm going to skewer this like so. Nice. And put the other one in. Skewer that just like so. And when you put this on, you, you want to sort of push this together a little bit. Because remember that the meat will shrink when you cook it. And if you have a couple of these little pieces of bacon hanging out like this, what you can do is simply take them and tuck them under maybe one of the, one of the metal parts of the cage here. Or if they really bother, you can always just take a knife and trim them like that. Now, we can cook this beautiful work of art. So what I'm going to do is move over to the grill. I'm going to go ahead and put the spit onto the grill, like so. And this is on kind of a low to moderate heat. It's going to take about 45 minutes, maybe 55 minutes to cook it to an internal temperature of 145 degrees. When the roast is done, take it off the grill, slide the spit out of it, and then let it sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, loosely covered with aluminum foil. That lets all those juices kind of redistribute within the pork. If you cut it too soon, the juices tend to just run out of the, out of the roast and it's not very good. So to slice this, re please remember that you do have strings on the outside. So I'm going to find those strings and just give it one quick cut like this. So you sort of find, it's easiest to find a knot and just sort of pull up a little bit, put your knife underneath and cut the string. Nice. And then I'm just going to grab all of those strings and just pull them right off of the roast. And you got to admit, it's really beautiful. Then I just simply want to take this, slice it up. Oh, you can see how juicy that is inside. You have that nice bacon on the outside. And remember that this roast was flavored with that brine. And so in addition to the flavor on the inside in that brine, you have the smoky and sweet on the outside with that bacon. It's a great dish and it's guaranteed to impress. 
To learn more about this recipe and to find lots of other great recipes, go to sabergrills.com.